Shane Thurston. I'm back with Tip Tuesday. We're going to talk about cowbells today and a way that you can help control the sound of those things. So uh, first remark I want to make is just if you're buying or in the market for cowbells, try to buy something that's appropriate for what it is that you want to do with it. Um, LP has a great line of salsa cowbells that have a lot of tone and a lot of sustain. Not a great cowbell for a rock and roll thing. So try to find something that's appropriate to what you want, you know, uh, kind of the middle of the road rock um, cowbell. Um, and the toka one, it's more of a low pitched uh, bongo bell. And then I've got a uh, Ridge Rider bell sitting right here. It's upside down. I actually have the yellow one and the red one. I prefer um, the bell turned upside down playing on the metallic edge instead of the plastic edge. That's just me. But what I want to talk about is a couple of ways you can help control that sound, especially if you're miking and whatnot. And um, so one of those is to, uh, I've talked about the Vader buzz kill before. If I hit this cowbell, all right, let's say I wanted to dry that up a little bit more. I'll do it again. If I put this, um, Let's kill right in the middle of the cowbell. It takes off a little of the edge. It may be hard to tell on the phone. Another thing you can do sometimes is take, if you get to Home Depot or Lowe's, you can buy these really strong magnets. If I take a magnet and put it up here, you can tell it lowered the pitch and took a little of the ring. If I put another in magnet, even drier, I can move those around. Lower the pitch a little bit, dry it up even more. I'm going to go to the edges of the cowbell out here. I'm going to go all the way up to the top of the cowbell. So take one away. Take both away. So hopefully this is coming through in the microphone. It's definitely taking away some of the overtones. These are strong magnets that you can get from Home Depot and whatnot. But what I do the most and that I used to do in the rock gigs all the time is I would take a sweatband. Now I've got a sweatband on this cowbell right here. And I would just put it over the edge of the cowbell and then pull it up like that. So I could go dry it up quite a bit. Here it is with no sweatband. A little bit of sweatband. Excuse the stick in the picture there. If I want to dry it up more, I can slide that sweatband up the cowbell even more. It's pretty dry. Okay, so again, this is one of the LP uh, Ridge Rider cowbells. This is the Rock Classic. Uh, there's also one with a red thing on it. So there it is. I'm going to stick a different cowbell on here. This is just a generic LP cowbell. A little bit of a high pitch, kind of a somewhat ringy. And what I've done here, I've stuck a little bit of the Velcro patch on here to hold the, belt, the uh, sweatband in place. So if I put this cowbell on, here it is with nothing. Quite ringing. Uh, unfortunately, I, I did it backwards. You got to put the sweatband on, on first. So if I put the sweatband over, slide it down, and then put it on the stand. Here it is. If I go very back, a little more ringing, off. And I can go as high as I want. When you get up near the front of the cowbell, it's pretty dead. So you don't want to get up there. But that Velcro, that uh, what we call the male end of the Velcro, will help that sweatband stay in place. Very dry. So if you need that kind of thing, sweatbands work really good. And you peel it off. And, of course, the, uh, the uh, Velcro patches, you can get them pretty easily. And they come off very easily. For some reason, I can't get this cowbell off of here very easily. Oh, I see what I did. I can't believe I just did that. There we go. And there it is. So, and I'm going to do one more cowbell. This is a toka. Uh, this is very ringy. So, I'm going to put the uh, sweatband on the end. And this is my favorite method. It's not that you can't use some other methods. A lot of people just tape them. Uh, to me, I, I don't like to do that because I find they get uh, a little bit gummy sometimes. So I uh, put that sweatband on. I can control the amount of ring by sliding it up and down the cowbell. So if I want to come about mid-bell, 
extend it quite a bit. I can actually come farther. And again, the, the Velcro, you see it's grabbing the sweat band, will he help keep it from sliding if you needed to. So that's deadened it quite a bit. And I could come all the way down if I need to. Hear it changing the overtones, changing the pitch. So, and it, you know, it's one of those things that sometimes you don't notice how much it does until it's completely off. And hopefully that's coming through on the phone. So these are just uh, some generic sweatbands that I got at uh, like Walmart or something like that. Um, and here's a uh, ge generic cowbell. There's, I don't even know what brand it is. It's just... So if I take the magnets and try that. Took away some of the overtones. And again, I'm going to try the sweatband on here and show you what I'm talking about. So here it is down on the edge. I'm not holding the bell in any way. We're going to go halfway up the bell. And we're going to go, you know, pretty, pretty close to the edge. Now, I can tell the difference. Hopefully that's coming through on the phone. But basically the trick is just get you a sweatband, put it on the cowbell. And I would oftentimes in the clubs, I would put it back at the edge of the bell. And a certain tunes, I'd slide it up really quick and then just slide it back down. So it depended on what I was looking for. So it's really nothing more than a sweatband. They're very cheap. You can get them for, you know, a couple bucks. Um, doesn't matter on the brand. You don't have to pay for a swoosh or anything like that if you don't want to. And uh, anyway, they work sliding up and down the cowbells. They make a big difference. So give it a try. Sweatbands, buzzkill, or even sub magnets will, will help uh, control overtones. So give them all a try.